Hey guys, thanks for accidentally tuning in to Table Knots, and today I have a big lofty goal that I want to share with y'all. Over the course of 2024, I'm going to attempt to play all 270 board games that I own. There's going to be a counter throughout 12 videos as I recount for you guys over each month how many of those I got played, and then on top of that, how many I added to it, because I'm going to also attempt to make sure I get a play in of every single game that I buy over the next year. A huge caveat for this is that I'm also not allowed to count online plays. And so that's really gonna hurt. But at the same time, it's important for this list because I wanna go through all of these games and as I play them decide, should I keep them? Do I really need this in my collection for another year? So that leads me to January. What games did I get played from my collection in January? These are gonna be very quick thoughts on these games i'm going to give you a rating out of five and also is it going to stay in my collection for at least another year um, we're going to start with the game that i played first in january going all the way to the one i played last and just so you know i didn't really come up with this challenge until after january had already started so a lot of these games are ones that i wanted to play they're, they're not like oh i have to play this for this for this challenge it's just these are the games that are hitting the table and so you're gonna see a lot of keeps at least for january but know that as we get into the months later I'm, I'm gonna probably be calling some games because there's some that i've just not played for years and so there's no way right like there's no way it holds up as well as it does in my mind we'll see so first up is freelancers by plaid hat games and this is a keep for me and it is also a five out of five for me i loved this game I, I played it with max and jash right before jash had to move back to japan and it was just one of those things where uh, it solidified why i really liked this game why i got it in the first place playing with jeff jamie and emily was just so much fun but playing with max and jash it just showed me that it wasn't just the group it was just a lot of fun i love the rpg elements and i love the laid back nature of this kind of game I know that some of you are probably like, okay, what do you think about this compared to the piratey themed game that came out before it? What is that one called? Oh no. Forgotten Waters. That's what it is. Yeah, I've actually not played Forgotten Waters yet, but I own it, and so be on the lookout because I'm gonna have to play it this year. <laughs> Number two I played was Sea Salt and Paper by Pandasaurus Games. No, this did come out from a different publisher. I think overseas, but in the States, that was the, the publisher that brought it here, and I'm so thankful that they did. I give it a 4.5 out of 5, a great score from me, and it's easily one that I will keep. Um, I doubt that this will ever leave my collection because for one, it's so small, it's not gonna take up that much space, and two, it gets played like easily at like two or three times a month, uh, if not at least once a week, because Emily and I love, even just as a two-player game, for us to go back to it and revisit it. It's so fun. She is insanely lucky when it comes to this game. She has a 93% win rate on me. We just looked that up, because yesterday I was like, how many times How many times are you gonna beat me? Like, I, I, I just, I get so unlucky. She always gets the shark and diver combo. And uh, yeah, but Sea Salt and Paper, incredible game. Number three is Converge by Button Shy. Now this is a game that we just got sent to us by Button Shy. Um, and it was for coverage. I give this a four out of five. It's a great game, and I think it is a keep for me right now. It will at least be a keep for the next year because the solo mode is a whole lot of fun. If it's a call, it's gonna be a call to max. Uh, it's not gonna be one that I, I need to necessarily get out of, our, out, out, out of our group. One of the three of us, Kenny, Max, and me, who love Button Shy, are going to keep this game. It's this little strategic card game where two players are gonna be playing cards to try to score the most points on a turn and that 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 is a key there because whoever scores the mo most points in a turn gets this little like catalyst looking card and if you have the catalyst card and score the most points at the end of a round you win and so it, it reminds me of like 
us being knee deep in a game of volleyball already and we both have 21 points and so if you know anything about volleyball you got to win by two points and that's what this game feels like is is one person has advantage and then the other person steals it back and then the other person has advantage and it's it's really interesting and really fun uh converge by button shy four out of five number four is also by button shy uh and this is skulls of sedlick this one i give uh a 3.5 out of five and it is a call to max yeah call to max max already has this um and i, I think that's fine I, I, we're going whenever i'm gonna want to play this game i'm gonna be with him uh and it's a very very good little filler game uh set of set collection and i like set collection a lot don't get me wrong on that at all it's just i already own a whole bunch of them i don't know how much this would get played over others other than it just being really great for travel it's this little game of collecting skulls and trying to get certain skull types to be beside each other but really really fun um i like this a lot and uh, if you are into that kind of game that can fit into like five to ten minutes this i would look it up number five played was pollen by all play and this was sent to us but after emily had already bought it for me so we played uh the copy that was sent to us and that's going to go home with Kenny, but I still have my copy and I've played this with Emily as well this month. Pollen is this cool little tile lane game where you're trying to win bees and beetles and butterflies uh, over other players, making your gardens more attractive to those. Um, and it, it's interesting in at the same time, I don't know how much more I need to play it. I give it a 3.5 out of 5, which um, is good to me and easily can stay in my collection. I think for now it's going to stay uh, because I appreciate that, you know, it, it's new to me right now. Um, but at the same time with Kinney having the deluxified version, um, unless it's a hit for Emily and I, or unless it's a hit for my family and I, there's not really much of a reason for me to keep it because I'll just, like if I'm playing it with Kinney, we're gonna play his version. Number six is an ongoing game that I'm playing um, the physical version, but online, it's, it's a bit odd. But Jeff and I, uh, Jeff from Fossil and Meeple, has a, his game set up uh, all the way up in Canada, and I have my game set up here, and every time he makes a move, he films it, and I move his pieces, and then I film my turn and send it to him. And it's been really, really fun uh, learning this game, but at the same time, Undaunted Normandy is just incredible. The Undaunted system, if you're unaware, is just a beautiful system of uh, deck building and skirmish and oh, it's so good. It's exactly the type of game that I've been missing. It has basically completely replaced my love for Memoir 44, which I was growing to love on BGA, but this is just way better. I don't know why I would play Memoir 44 when I could play this. I give Undaunted a five out of five and this system is incredible. I'm looking forward to getting the reinforcements package so I can play solo. Great game, keeping it, absolutely. Number seven is another button shy game. I know I'm knocking out a lot of those, but this is Revolver Noir. Uh, and I give this game a four to five, it's great. I'm definitely keeping it. Um, it's a quick little two player card game where you're trying to basically discover where the other person is uh, while also trying to hide your location. And I would call this spy versus spy the game. You're just trying to shoot or trap the other person in the mansion while you're running around. And um, anytime you decide to take a shot in a space, you have to reveal where you are. So you're you're taking a big risk, but if you get it right, then, then you're golden. Uh, but it's a very, very fun push and pull uh, kind of game. And uh, it leads to these really intense, like fun moments. Uh, but Revolver Noir, absolutely a keep. Number eight is Awkward Guests by Megacorp and Games. And uh, this is an easy keep because we play it all the time. It has replaced games like Clue. It is an incredible little deduction-y um, like uh, figure it out, figure out who killed who, murder game. And uh, I give it a 4.5 out of 5. I've literally probably played this about 50 times. I've gotten a lot of mileage out of it. And the reason that it's so like replayable is because with all of the cards in the game and with the app that you can get, um, the setup for each game can be different every single time you play it you're never going to get the same combination of cards you're never going to get the same like outcome 
and that that's awesome that a game has that much stuff in it that it can do that um, but awkward guess great game absolutely keep number nine is a game that i did not expect to say it's a keep but it's a keep for now um, and this is a game by exploding kittens called hand to hand wombat which is just a dexterity game with a social deduction twist where every player is going to have one hand over their eyes and another player is going or everybody uh, and their other hand is going to be used to stack blocks inside of the board box itself um that sounds really easy and it should be uh but the problem is is that one player is secretly trying to keep the players from doing that they don't want everyone to build the blocks and uh they're the bad wombat uh, at the end of each round, players get to vote on who is the bad wombat, and you eliminate them from play. They don't reveal who they were, so you, you, you still don't know if you can trust everybody else. And then game continues until one team, kind of like, um, I think Resistance is this way, where uh, based on the missions that you do and how many points are scored um, or how many good cards versus bad cards are played, you, you find out who, uh, or find, find out who wins, uh, which team wins. And no team can win in just one round. And so it's just this, it's, it's very silly. And I played this with Aaron, Max, and Emily, and we love this. I, I can't uh, explain it <laughs> because it's not that like complicated of a game. It's not that like amazing of a game. I gave it a 3.5 out of five, but it's gonna stay in my collection if only for those moments once a year where we pull it out with the right group of people and it's really fun and silly. Number 10 was that same game night. We played Mission Control Critical Orbit by Third World Studios. And this game is a roll and write for up to, I believe four players. Four, yeah, four players. It's real time. And so one player is trying to get help. Uh, they're in space, they're trapped in space. They're gonna die unless they get help from Mission Control. And so he, they're rolling the dice, calling out the numbers, and the other players have to tell them which dice they would like for them to use that round. Then they call it out, and every player uh, is going to be playing a different style of roll and write. Uh, it's a very complete, like each different roll feels very different. And their goal is to complete certain things on their roll and write to give the player uh, who is trapped polyomino pieces and uh, valves and all of these different things so that they can build out this this um, this board to have enough oxygen to get them to stay alive and uh, it's really really neat really fun with the right people and I give this game a solid four out of five it is great all right we are 10 games in which we're trucking. We're doing well. Number 11 is Hey, That's My Fish by Next Move Games. And this is another keep. I know. I know. We're so surprised. Doolin is keeping his games. He's not one to call him. Um, but this is great. This was such a fun little strategy game. I got it for Christmas this year, and I won't want to get rid of this for quite some time. Um, it's this easy, easy to learn little game of pushing penguins around on this map and collecting the fish when they leave a space. The only thing is that those fish are also the ice tiles you'll need to move around on. And if you cannot move your your penguin off of the ice space it's currently on, then it's not gonna move the rest of the, of the round. And so it's this really strategic little uh, trapping mean game where based off of where other people's penguins are you're going to try to keep them from being as efficient as possible by collecting the best fish and then also blocking their players from ever escaping the small little amount of tiles that they're on um it reminds me of Fall Guys and specifically the hexagon based uh, final round that would often happen where players are trying to stay on the spaces and every time they jump on a space it disappears. It's basically that but in a board game form and I love it. Number 12 is a uh, is a game by Brother Wise Games. This was sent, well, kind of sent to us. It was given to us at Gen Con. Really, really kind of them to give it to us. It's this Overboss Duel. And I played this with Max uh, after that game night was over. And he and I were the only two that were still willing to play games. Um, and it's a fun little, like, tile drafting mean version of Overboss. I gave it 
a solid 3.5 out of 5, which to me is good. Um, for me, though, it is a it was a coal. Uh, I just gave it to Max, uh, and the reason being is because I own Overboss, and I think Overboss in my mind is still the way to play this game. Um, and I didn't didn't feel like I needed to own both. Number thirteen is from All Play Games. This is Sale. Um, I love Sale. It was an easy decision to keep this game. It's a four point five out of five for me. Um, this game is a cooperative trick-taking game that also is about moving a boat across a map based off of who win the trick with what type of card and um, on top of trying to move the boat like you have to move the boat strategically around tentacles from the kraken that is trying to kill you it's also you're trying to go fast enough to avoid the storm that is following you it is it is tight it is difficult it is so fun and the difficulty ramps up with each type of scenario that you go back and play. Number 14 is Fika, 25th Century Games. Um, this is a keep for me because it is such a small, easy, tight, um, playing mean two-player game that Emily and I really like. Um, I give it a 3.5 out of 5. I don't think it's perfect. I think that some people will find a lot of faults with this kind of game comparing it to other games that are like it. Um, I think it wouldn't get as much play as if Emily didn't enjoy it so much. If you want to try it, it's, it is on BGA. I think that that would be a good way to kind of decipher whether or not getting the game is for you or not. Um, but Fika is a keep for me. That was number 14. Number 15 is Sagrada Artisans by Floodgate Games. And this is also a keep, but with the caveat of I don't know how to rank this because as much as I love Sagrada, it's a top 20 game for me. Love the dice placement, love the like the strategy involved with the game. Um, it's near perfect. Um, but Artisans, Emily and I both found ourselves just wanting to play base Sagrada. And now granted, we've only played one scenario. And so I'm not even going to rank this. It's going to stay unranked until we play some more. But I could very easily see us backing out of this campaign like three or four in if we don't see ourselves wanting to play it over the base game um, on top of that once it's done there's not really any reason to go back to it and so I'm, I'm trying to I it was a little bit of a disappointment but I'm not going to talk too much about it because it was only one play so we're definitely going to go back to it but Scrata Artisans number 15 keeping but unranked for now number 16 was a game that found its way to my table so so many times in January and that was because I left it up on my solo board and played Marvel Zombies um, and this is an easy keep because it's not only a great solo game but it was very fun playing this with Max and Jash and it's a 4.5 out of 5 for me it's not perfect it definitely has some moments where if you hate 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 it when a game when you flip over a card just absolutely screws you over and you really couldn't plan for it then you're not going to like this. It, there's going to be moments where that happens. In fact, I got extremely unlucky, and I played the third scenario about eight times before I was finally able to win um, without cheating. And so, um, and that 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 for me is cool because I got to mix and match my heroes. I learned a lot, um, and I think I'm going to make some videos on the strategy of, of Marvel Zombies and how it's very different because if you just play it like a normal Zombicide game, you're going to lose a bunch, but there is ways to help uh, with that. But great game, very fun, very different than any Zombicide I've ever played. Love Marvel Zombies, 4.5 out of 5. Number 17 is by Alley Cat Games, and this was Starfighters, and this is a keep for me for now. Um, it was a very fun solo experience. I did not realize that they were going to add a solo mode when we first got it all the way back in 2021 to re like preview the game. It, Max and I loved the real-time dice rolling game. It reminds me of Fuse. It reminds me of Pandemic Rapid Response, but this might be the best of the bunch. And I don't say that lightly because I love those other two games. Um, it also might be the reason Fuse gets cold eventually. Fun game, Starfighters, a four out of five. Great game. Number 18, I think, is the last of the Button Shy games. Uh, we had a whole bunch uh, this <laughs> this month because of Kenny, um, and I got this one and then immediately played it that week, so Naturopolis by Button Shy is a keep for me for now because 
uh, I do have Sprawlopolis, and I need to play Sprawlopolis and decide which one I like more. The thing is, too, is I could keep both because there is an expansion that allows all of them. I think it's Com Com Comboopolis, Com Combopolis. I don't, I don't know. Um, but <laughs> but all of them can get used together, and Natropolis is i don't know if it, i'm just out of practice from sprawl up it just feels way harder i i've lost that game every single time i've played it i give it a four out of five it is just one of those that like i i i really like it right now i just hope that that doesn't go away really quickly i'm falling in love with it fast sometimes that means that i fall out of love with it fast next up number 19 is trio and nana i got both played um, but I'm going to combine them because they are basically the exact same game. Uh, they are easy keeps. They are 4.5 out of 5s for me. Near perfect game. It might be a 5 out of 5 eventually. Uh, but this is a little card game that reminds me of Go Fish. But it's, again, just the gamers Go Fish. And its core mechanic is memory. But it is such a fun game to play with a group whether they are experienced gamers or not and it's hit for every single group i've introduced it to emily loves it max kenny i all of us love it in the world seems to be falling for it <laughs> which is fair because it is incredible easy keep and that leads me to number 20 number 20 is a game that will surprise a lot of you that it is a keep but this is Fast and Furious Highway Heist, which is a co-op mm, boss battler game um, where you're driving your car as one of the famous characters from the Fast and Furious franchise, and you're trying to take down either a tank, a chopper, or steal a bunch of supplies off of a semi. This is so silly. There's going to be tons of moments where things don't really make sense that you're doing, whether it be uh, using a, another car, bumping another car into another car, catapulting it into a, the tank, causing it damage, or uh, literally shooting a grappling hook at, a, at another car and launching it at a helicopter. And <laughs> I, I gotta say that all of that in the moment feels so exciting and it's a lot like, it's on brand. It's exactly on brand for the movies. Um, if you've ever seen the movies, they do stuff like that. And so they really captured that in the board game. You're going to be jumping from a car to another car as your car explodes. And, like, it, it, it's just stunt stuff, the game. And Emily and I loved playing it. And I give it a 3.5 out of 5. I know it's not perfect. I know it's not going to be on a lot of people's lists. But it's an easy keep, at least until we get through all of the bosses. And then it might be a discussion of, do we need to go back and play the tank again? Do we need to go back and fight, face the chopper again? Like, but e easily, I recommend this game. If you are a fan of the movies, it captures the feeling of the movies to a T. Love, love that. Um, but Fast and Furious Highway Heist number 21, or number 20, a keep. Number 21 is Cat in the Box by Bezier Games, and this is an easy keep, 4.5 out of 5. Uh, it is a game that will stay in my collection for probably a long time because it is one of the best trick takers I have ever played. Uh, there's a neat little um, area control aspect of the game where if you get exactly the number of tricks you said you were going to get, you get to also score the bonus whatever cards were beside each other in in terms of number and color uh, that you played like all of that is going to score you points but at the same time because of the nature of this game where you just get to, to, to bleh, you just get to declare the color of the card that you just played there are going to be times where towards the end of the round you're not going to be able to play a card and that causes a paradox to happen meaning that you are gonna lose points. And I, I think this game is silly, it's fun, um, it's exciting when you have a paradox in your hand and the person before you causes a paradox. And it's just like a, like, ah, there's nothing like it. And um, it's very unique, very fun. Absolutely give Cat in the Box a try. That leads me to number 22, which I think is my most played game. Yeah, it's my most played game for January at 16 plays. Uh, I left it up on my solo board for at least a week, and it was just one of those that was easy to get plays of. Um, and it's not really a game you can lose, but this is Pegasus, Pegasus Spiel's Dwarf Romantic, which I believe was the family game of the year last year. It's a very simple to learn tile placement game 
but the reason you come back is because based off of your score, you get to mark off a certain number of bubbles on this sheet, and that unlocks new stuff that always helps you score more as the game goes on. Um, you start off scoring like 100 is a good score, getting over 100 is a good score, but you're bubbling in the very bottom of the score track, and as you go, you see your score start to get better and better because of all these new things that are gonna get added. On top of that, you're just getting better as you play the game, and that that sort of upgrade unlock new stuff, uh, upgrade yourself type of game is very chill, very, very fun uh, for a solo, and uh, I would recommend it to anybody who's a puzzle lover, who loves that kind of like tile uh, laying game, and it can just be one you play and not have to worry about winning or losing, you're just trying to get the best score you can, so you can unlock more stuff, so you can get a higher score next time, and great Great idea for a game, love it. Uh, and then number 23, the last of my plays for January, which if you're doing the math, gets me at about 9% of my collection, which is about on pace with where I need to be in order to, to get all of these done. But that is Caper Europe by Keymaster Games. It is an easy keep. It is a five out of five game. The production of this game is incredible. And I've, I learned it on BGA, fell in love with it on BGA. And then when I finally got my copy, I realized how great of a game this is to play in person. And this game, you're gonna be drafting thieves and then you're gonna be drafting the equipment to go on those thieves. And based off of that, it's gonna be a game of set collecting specific colors to score points. It's gonna be a game about collecting more thievery um, in certain locations so that you can score that location. It's gonna be about stealing the goods at each location so that you can get the bonuses uh, along with those those pieces and it's just very back and forth push and pull kind of game that is very fun I love playing this and it will as long as somebody is willing <laughs> to to play it um, it is an easy keep for me for a long time and that leads me to the end of this month a couple of thoughts I have I've, I have 23 of 270 games played um, <laughs> I had three games at a five star. I had five games at a 4.5. I had seven games at a four. I had six games at a three and a half and I had one game at a three. So pretty high ratings. Uh, and again, just these are games I own. <laughs> so I'm naturally going to be like, I like this um, for most of them, at least if I've played them before. Uh, and on top of that, I didn't know that I was going to do this until about halfway through January. I was like, this would be fun. This would be give, give me a goal uh, for the year that is approachable, but also lofty. I want to I want to go for it. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be difficult, but 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 a, but a fun challenge nonetheless. And I think I'm going to have to schedule some game nights <laughs> and uh, just knock out a whole bunch of games all at once. Um, but this will be fun and I'm going to keep track of it every single month. So I'll see you again towards the uh, like beginning of March to recount February. And, um, yeah, let me know down in the comments if you think I'm going to do it. If you think I'm going to fail fantastically, either way, it's going to be a good ride. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. We'll see you next time. Bye.